Hello everybody, great to be with you this afternoon and welcome to another edition of uh, our program Homespun. Number 68, well we've been going a long time but it's uh, great to be with you yet again to have our core viewers and to those of you who are joining us for the very first time a big big welcome to you. We've got some very special guests that I'm going to introduce to you as uh, our afternoon rolls on. Uh, we've got Paul Jones and Fiona Henley and uh, well I'm looking forward to chatting to them and hearing something of their story, their song and uh, what's in their heart for this afternoon. It's just going to be a great conversation. It was um, a poet of uh, great notoriety really, uh, Alfred Lord Tennyson, who once said a good hymn is the most difficult thing in the world to write and uh, well I concur with that because um, I guess you know a lot of my songs will be uh, aiming towards being modern day hymns and uh, you know whilst there's the inspirational moments there's those times where it's all about trying to craft the, the words and, and put them in the right kind of way that, that other people can I identify with and make the language of their own. And uh, I'm going to start this, this session really by singing a, a song, uh, a hymn that um, I'd sort of been reintroduced uh, to just over um, the, these last uh, few weeks. And it was written by Robert Lowry way back in 1865. My goodness. I mean, the aim of any soul writer is to write a song that outlasts you. And um, this is a song that's been reinterpreted in many, many different ways. And uh, Pete Seeger, even um, one of my folk heroes, uh, uh, did it uh, on an album. Um, Robert Lowry was a Baptist minister. It was taken up by the Quakers in, in, in a big way. And uh, I think, you know, it's fitting to sing it today because uh, our two guests can uh, very much identify uh, with the message of the song, as indeed I can. My heart flows on in endless song Above earth's lamentations I hear a clear and far off hymn That hails a new creation No storm can shake my inmost calm While to that rock I'm clinging since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? Through all the tumult and the strife, I hear the music ringing. It finds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm While to that rock I'm clinging Since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth How can I keep from singing? When though the pale and comfort die I know my Savior liveth What though the darkness gather round Songs in the night He giveth No storm can shake my inmost calm While to that rock I'm clinging since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? The peace of Christ makes fresh my heart, a fountain ever springing. All things are mine since I am His. How can I keep from singing? Mm -hmm. 
this is what I'll be singing. In the name of the Lord, there is salvation in the name of Christ the Lord. I will worship the Lord, cause we stand forgiven through Jesus Christ the Lord. Lift your voice, lift your heart, come and sing. And rejoice in Him in the name of the Lord. There is salvation through Jesus Christ the Lord. In the name of the Lord. There is salvation in the name of Christ the Lord. We will worship the Lord. Because we stand forgiven through Jesus Christ the Lord. Lift your voice, lift your heart, come and sing, and rejoice in Him, in the name of the Lord. There is salvation through Jesus Christ the Lord. Say yes, yes to Jesus. Say yes, yes to Jesus. Say yes, yes. To Jesus, make him Lord of all your heart. In the name of the Lord, there is salvation in the name of Christ the Lord. We will worship the Lord, because we stand forgiven through Jesus Christ the Lord. Lift your voice, lift your heart. Come and sing and rejoice in Him in the name of the Lord. There is salvation through Jesus Christ the Lord. Say yes, yes, yes to Jesus. Say yes, yes to Jesus. Say yes, yes. To Jesus, make him Lord of all your heart. Last time now, in the name of the Lord, there is salvation in the name of Christ the Lord. We will worship the Lord, because we stand forgiven through Jesus Christ the Lord. Through Jesus Christ the Lord. Through Jesus Christ the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> In the name of the Lord. Well, yeah, because this afternoon really is that opportunity to perhaps um, come from under the waves of those things that are bogging us down throughout uh, our, our lives and uh, come up and breathe some fresh air of God's grace. Number 68, time for grace. That's it. And... Uh, if you like, want to change the analogy, it's like um, coming, coming before the, the waterfall and receiving something of that mercy and that grace into our situations. It's been quite a week. There's been so much news, just like every other news, flying at us, so much of it bad news. And yet um, we have good news to share. Good news that we can be forgiven and we can be released from those things that hold us down a little bit of news that i got was um uh celebration chocolates uh have um taken away the uh taken away one particular the coconut yeah. the coconut bounty out of their selection for this christmas and uh I mean, that made the news. I don't know. I mean, perhaps. <laughs> so I suppose it was a sort of good news thing or a big advertising feature. I don't know. But, uh, you know, I, I was a bit sad about that because I like the bounty ones. I, I do. Hmm. <laughs> My heart and soul cry out to Jesus He is the one that I adore 
I've tasted of his loving kindness Now I surrender with my all Cause I've seen the beauty of forgiveness Undeserved and given out to me Undeserved and so amazing by his wounds, my brokenness is healed. By his wounds, my brokenness is healed. My heart and soul cry out to Jesus. He is the one that I adore. I've tasted off his loving kindness Now I surrender with my whole Cause I've seen the beauty of forgiveness At the cross where mercy is revealed Undeserved and so amazing by his wounds my brokenness is healed By his wounds my brokenness is healed My heart and soul cry out to Jesus He is the one that I adore I've tasted off his loving kindness Now I surrender with my home Cause I've seen the beauty of forgiveness At the cross where mercy is revealed Undeserved and so amazing by his wounds, my brokenness is healed. By his wounds, my brokenness is healed. What an invitation to us. And uh, I'm really going to invite uh, Paul and Fiona to uh, come on the screen now. And uh, there they are in their home. Hi. And, uh, lovely to have you uh, with us this afternoon. I thank you so much for agreeing to join with our, our little homespun session. I could see our albums. Pleasure. I could see... I could see albums, I could see books behind you. Quite impressive there. I'm sure there's many more around the house. But I'm, I'm still living in the afterglow of um, the big event that we had uh, last, uh, last Sunday, wasn't it? Oh, yes. It, it was wonderful. It was, it was terrific. Um, not least yourself. But <laughs> we, had, <laughs> we, had a, we had a very strong cast, as we say in the theatre, of... Uh, of uh, you know, ministry of uh, music people, and um, yeah. it, it it really it really was uh, very exciting indeed. Just so amazing the hearts for all of you. You were all amazing. You just came, just so quickly when you were asked. You went yes, we'll do it. And Dave, you were absolutely beautiful. I mean the oh, and when everyone was singing Abba Father in that place, it was just yeah. glorious. Oh, it's lovely. It really, yeah. really was glorious. And just for everyone to have come, you know, just amazing names right at the top of the sort of worship leader and yes. people in, in, in the gospel world. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, I mean, we had, oh, we had Bryn Howarth, we had Lou yes. Fellingham. I mean, there were so many that I... Noel uh, Robinson. Noel Robinson, yeah. Yes. yeah I, and, and, yeah. 
uh, yeah, I know you coordinated this very much with our friend Les, Les Moyer, but it, it was very yes. much your, your vision to do something for the people of Ukraine. How did it come about? I mean, why, why would you want to do that? Well, I mean, everybody must have thought, what? You know, when Russia invaded Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And, uh, you know, we, we immediately wanted to do something. I actually have a friend in Ukraine. He's a, he's a wonderful harmonica player. And his name is mm. Konstantin Koleshnik, Koleshnikov. No, that sounds yeah. like a rifle. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I, I, I'm, getting, I'm getting his surname wrong. But uh, Konstantin, uh, forgive me. But uh, he, he's, he's absolutely amazing. He's a wonderful musician. And uh, he's just put up on uh, on Facebook uh, a post today, or it may have been late yesterday, uh, to say that uh, thank you to, to someone who's sent him uh, some money. He actually funnels money to the, uh, to the soldiers in Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, because I mean, some of them are, are, are fighting on a shoestring, and uh, yeah. so it, it, it's really, a, it's really wonderful uh, to to be in touch with him and, and to help. And so we wanted to to help on a sort of slightly larger level, and the obvious yes. way to do it was through Samaritan's Purse, and that's yeah. what Sunday was all about. Last Sunday was all about uh, yeah. raising some money. Uh, which will get uh, straight from Kensington Temple to Samaritan's Purse and yes. by Samaritan's Purse go straight to the Ukraine and be not uh, weapons or ammunition or anything like that, but uh, m medical supplies mm. and food mm. and uh. desperately needed items, uh, which mm. they, they use local churches to funnel that stuff into the population of Ukraine. And it's truly mm. amazing what they do. They, they've got they've got medical teams out there, and they've got they've actually built temporary hospitals, and they, they've got a socking great aircraft which goes over from America. Goodness knows how wow. many times since that war began, uh, mm. full of food and stuff to help. They, they really are amazing people, mm. Samaritans first. Mm. Wonderful. Because I know, you know, I speak for so many in the worship community that when we heard about it, that uh, uh, it was a real opportunity to do something that enabled the practical response. You know, it's great to sing songs in church and, and uh, talk about worship and talk about praise, but to actually um, do something that has practical implications mm -hmm. as part of that worship. Well, of course, all our, wor all our lives should be that, but, um, uh, a, you know, a practical yes. response what was really really great to to see happen and um you hosted it so well both of you fiona is great and well actually pat's um put together pat is our congregation here in the um in, in the living room because you probably heard us i love her when she sings along with me in the background there and uh, claps her hands and gets you all going pat was um you know in the sidelines in the in the bleachers uh with um with her mobile phone and uh, she was taking various bits of film. I mean, she wasn't able to get everybody on because at times the battery of the phone ran, ran out. But um, we've just run a little sort of show reel, which we're going to play uh, for you. And as well, uh, as um, we come to the end later on, later on, we haven't come to the end, we're just getting started. But later on, um, we're really going to flash up um, a link on the screen if people do want to still give uh, into yeah. Ukraine. Um, so that would be great. So, Pat, why don't you, why don't you show some of your... your
little bit later. In fact, well done, Pat. Um, you know, maybe uh, we'll show that show reel right at the end yeah. uh, again as well. But Paul, you, you actually put on a, an event um, earlier in the year where our friend uh, Noel Robinson um, was involved with a number of mainstream artists. Uh, tell us about <laughs> that. I, I'm, I'm not sure I approve of the definition of mainstream as opposed to Christian. I mean, Christian yeah. is mainstream. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. absolutely right. Um, yeah. it, well, the, you, we have to use the word secular, but I've been doing those charity gigs um, for um, something like 15 years now. And uh, just they used to be just before Christmas, but now they're in early January and at a larger venue. And um, we've had some amazing people, uh, uh, again, give their services absolutely free. Uh, people like Tom Jones and Eric Clapton and Van Morrison. Uh, huh? And, and uh, yes, they, they, they are truly wonderful. And so are lots of other uh, slightly lesser known, but equally good people. Uh, Noel yeah. Robinson is one of those. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. In fact, I have to say that Noel was really Fiona's idea at the um, right. at the, the, the charity gig in January, and uh, yeah. I, I said, oh, oh, do, you think, "Do you think that they'll like him?" But, and and uh, she she said, "Not quite in so many words. Don't worry about what the audience thinks. He's right." <laughs> so, so and we, they and they yeah. loved him. Uh, they, they, they did. They oh. absolutely. Yes, they did. Loved him. They yeah, loved well, that's great. I mean, he's so talented, Noel. And we've had him on here, uh, Homespun, actually. Oh. Uh, and uh, yeah, we, it was great. It was great. Fiona, I want to talk about you because, um, you know, you have had a distinguished career as an, is it an actor or actress nowadays? I don't know which, which one it is, which, what they call. I. Nor do I, Dave. Okay. I don't really it's care. whatever you want it to be. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, but, you know, you've had a very distinguished career and um, TV as well with uh, Widows, wasn't Widows, it? Widows, yes. Uh, that's series. right. Which, what, what was the storyline? Because it was a very popular. Um, what was the storyline of Widows? It, it was. Well, it's, it's, it's literally four women married to guys who were gangsters. Now, it's very interesting, actually, because when I did series one, I wasn't mm. yet a Christian. And mm -hmm. then I became a Christian and then they did another series. So it's kind of interesting. But anyway, so they're married to these gangsters and these gangsters do a, a bank job and get killed doing it um, in London yeah. in an underpass. Uh, a, a, a van explodes and they all get killed. So really the opening scenes are at, a, at funerals and things like this. And these women are left. And one of them, uh, a woman called Dolly, who was played by Anne Mitchell, she contacts yeah. the other widows and she says, you know, why don't we take on where our, our husbands left off? And they think about it and they think, well, why not? Uh, they, you know, they've got nothing to lose, they think. Of course they have. They've got everything to lose. It's a terrible yeah. idea. But this is what happens. So that's the start of it. And it's sort of this, this, this uh, actress, you know, Dolly, Anne Mitchell, who was the sort of, linchpin she gathers them all and they decide to work on what they're going to do and eventually they do pull off a, and they do it um but it's very interesting because uh, you know becoming a christian in between the two series yeah. i then yeah. thought hang on a minute <laughs> i don't know if i want to do this and it was interesting yeah. because in the second series i did say to the director there are some things I didn't want to do. And I, I said very politely, is it all right if I do it this way? And, you know, they were very good. They were lovely. But it was written by Linda LaPlante. And yeah. the funny thing is, I mean, just getting the job was hysterical because I was working at the Royal National Theatre at the time. Yes. And um, my agent called and said, they want to see you for this, this new television series. Now, the buzz about it was massive. It was everybody wanted to go up for the, the to, to play one of the widows yeah. and anyway so my agent said but but the you know casting director wants to speak to you because you can't go like you are apparently they're looking at your picture and going this is exactly what we see shirley miller the character it, she looks just like we we hope you know but we've got to we've got to test her and the casting director said to me 
you've got to come from the East End and your mother has got to work on a, on a stall, you know, in the East, East End. End. That's good. I like it. Yeah. Because <laughs> they want you to be authentic. And I said, well, that's not true. So she said, just act, <laughs> act. That's what I said. So I went there and I just pretended. I, I And this, you know, I was not... I told some fu- some fibs. I'm I'm sorry, you, Lord. You lied. I lied. Yes. I lied. <laughs> ah. I wasn't saved yet. And uh, yeah, and, and I I kind of you know went in there and talked like this. Do you know what I mean? And uh, and got yeah. the job. There we are. You got the job. She got, she got was... the job. But, but the, then when, when, when was it? It was before the start of the shooting. They oh, had yes. a, they yes. had a big get together at a very posh restaurant in the West End of London. They were lovely. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, and. Um, they they were all there and and um, actually I was Fiona, too- Fiona was working at the National Theatre as she said so she came in rather late and they they'd all had a little you know and they were yeah. shouting and laughing at just the way s- some people in a restaurant can do and uh, no they were they were lovely they were very excited about the starting of the filming and as I yeah. walked towards the table. Um, they kind of went, hey, yeah, look at Shirley. And I thought, <laughs> I thought I'm going to have really? to act it now. And I, I did. And yeah. Anyway, they, were just, yeah. they were just adorable. Yeah. Oh, come on. Well, you've it was got very to say successful. No, yeah, no. There was one of the actresses there, that one of the other four, one of the other widows. And she said, you know, it, uh, it's great, isn't it? Because we're, we're all the real thing. They're, I'm tired yeah. of getting them toffee nosed actresses coming in and pretending <laughs> to be us. Isn't that right? And Fiona said, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Got away with it. My goodness. Well, you mentioned the National because that's how you met, wasn't it? At, at the National. Was it Guys and Dolls that you were both well, in? Well, actually, uh, Fiona was at the National before I was. She was in Guys and Dolls. And I was right. in the first night audience. And I uh-huh. absolutely was bowled over by the quality of the production. The acting was incredible. The music was wonderful. It was just brilliant. And mm-hmm. and and I was a person who didn't really like musicals, you know. Uh-huh. But anyway, uh, but I, I actually on that occasion I couldn't help noticing this one person in the cast. And um, I, 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 only a little while later, the director said to me. I'm going to do the Beggar's Opera with this exactly the same cast, only we haven't got a Mac Heath. So will you come and play Mac Heath as the, the sort of lead? Mm-hmm. And I said, uh, yes, I will do that. And uh, that was when we met. And because Ian Charlson, a very fine actor who was playing the Marlon Brando part in Guys and Dolls, uh, mm-hmm. decided he'd had enough and left, I took over in that as well. So. We mm. were playing opposite each other in both productions. Mm. Mm. And, and one thing start, led to another. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we, it, you know, it's just so embarrassing when you're playing these parts where you have to fall in love. And uh-huh. then you think, I'm not sure I'm acting anymore. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. My hands would get so clammy, Dave. And I yeah. would, you know, we'd be singing these love songs to each other night after night. And then one night we were both standing in the wings waiting to go on to do a scene. And this very sweet older lady who was playing one of the Salvation Army ladies, she just came up to us, sort of put her hand on our shoulder. And she said, why don't you two just get on with it? And she (laughs) she knew and everybody knew. (laughs) And we'd sort of been avoiding each other because we didn't want to, um, you know, Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you were together and it was sort of later on that um, your lives both took on another dimension uh, yeah. because you well, un- you started to think about more spiritual things. Is that right? Both independently or together or how, yeah. how did all well, that happen? Independently. I mean, I, I had I had uh, developed a hobby while I was in a band called the Blues Band. Mm. I developed the hobby of uh, looking at paintings uh, in order to cool down and calm down and become objective about being in a band, you know, because sometimes you can let that get away with you completely and you become become your own best fan, 
and I didn't really want to do that. <laughs> I'd already done it in the 60s, and I wasn't happy with that. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I started to look at paintings, and it was the paintings of a German artist called Kaspar Friedrich. Kaspar David Friedrich lived two centuries ago, and um, mm. it, it, he, he, was a, he was a Christian. I didn't know that at the time. I just liked his paintings. And then I started yeah. to sort of feel that there was sort of spiritual power in these paintings. And I, I thought, I'm an atheist. What, what am I doing thinking I, I can see or experience spiritual power? That's nonsense. Yeah. Uh, however, nonsense prevailed and became sense. And uh, my atheism went out the back door, yeah. I'm yeah. happy to say. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yes. And... And you sort of always thought you were a Christian. Yeah, I did. I, I, I never, if anybody said, do you believe in God? I would say yes. But the thing is, I, I had no idea who God was. I, I love the idea of God, but, you know, who is he? Where is he? Why is he? I had no idea that, that we're supposed to have this lovely, intimate, loving relationship with this heavenly father. I didn't know anything about that. Mm. And various things happened as I was a little girl and growing up that were drawing me to the Lord. And one of the experiences was my dear, precious Auntie Orwin from Wales. She invited me for my 12th birthday to go and see Jesus Christ Superstar. Now, I'm mm -hmm. very, very well aware that Jesus Christ Superstar isn't absolutely accurate with the Bible. But, you know, it's amazing how there are parts in that show and the the one that i saw was a very sort of uh, it was a very old-fashioned version of jesus christ but it was, it was the original in the west end and uh you know everybody was dressed as you imagine them to be dressed you know when jesus walked on that stage he was all dressed in white and just as i would have imagined jesus christ to be and they were playing the scenes when our lord jesus was walking on this earth you know and, and the bible says that jesus went about doing good healing all who mm. were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. And he was, he was helping people to see God, the kingdom of God. He was healing and he was teaching them about God. And, and I just loved it. I absolutely loved it. There were scenes where people were healed who were very, very ill. And, and it was just so moving to me. And I, I kind of, for the first time, I understood a little bit about the fact that he is love. And he loves everyone and he came to love and to forgive. Well, of course, as you know, the story is not great. Um, Jesus gets arrested because the religious mm. leaders of the day absolutely hated this love and all the miracles that were happening. And as you know, they wanted to kill him. And, and suddenly I'm looking up at that stage with my dear auntie beside me, the pair of us pouring with tears as we're seeing this wooden cross and Jesus on the cross, having been nailed to that cross while he was still alive. And, you know, Dave, if only I'd known that night why the Lord Jesus was on that cross. I had no idea. If somebody had come out onto that stage and said, let me just tell you what, what the Lord is doing on mm -hmm. the cross. Because it says very clearly in the Bible that Jesus, he who knew no sin, became sin for us. And for us to be forgiven, because he takes that sin upon himself on that cross, he took all sin, the whole sin of mankind, all our shame and our guilt and our sorrow and our pain upon himself, mm. that we might be forgiven and cleansed so that we can have a relationship with the Father in heaven. Oh, I would have just fallen on my knees that night, but I didn't know that. And I left there absolutely just broken hearted that he died on a cross. So it was going to be a few more years before I'd find out why Jesus went to the cross. But that mm. was drawing me. That was drawing me. Yeah. Mm. So that was one of the things. And then, of course, when we met, when we were falling in love, what we would do is we would have a cup of tea in the interval together. You know what it's like when you're falling in love. Mm -hmm. you, want to, you want to talk with each other, find out about each other. And um, one night, we're having a cup of tea, and I'd say to Paul, do you believe in God? And you said, well, well to be an atheist. And I thought, oh, no, you know. <laughs> and then we started talking. And I said, well, I do. 
but I just didn't know who, who he was. Well, God did an absolutely amazing thing, didn't he? During that time that I was doing, working at the National Theatre with you, I was also doing a radio play in London at the BBC. And one day I came out of doing the play and I was about to go back to the, the tube to get the tube back to the National Theatre. And I'm standing in the doorway of the BBC and I see a church in front of me. And it's actually a very famous church. I, I'd not heard of it at that time. It's All Souls Langham Place. Mm. And I just found myself walking into that church. I just, it was empty. I sat down. There's the most beautiful oil painting of the Lord Jesus Christ at the front of the church. And there were Bibles in front of all the seats. And I I just found my hand, my hand going to this Bible. And I'm thinking, what are you doing? I'd been very rude about the Bible. I didn't know anything about it. I flipped it open and it fell open at really, I suppose, the most famous verse in the Bible. Um, you've got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And it's John chapter 3, verse 16, where it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. And honestly, Dave, mm. I sat there. I, it was like I had no understanding of what I was reading, but I knew I wanted it. And I wanted to find mm. out what is eternal life. I went straight back to the theater, knocked on your dressing room door. You opened the door and I said to you, please don't laugh at me, but I've been into a church today and I've read something in the Bible and I, I've got to find out what eternal life is. I, I, I just have to, and I'm going to go to that church on Sunday, and then you... And I said, I'm going with you. <laughs> I, I knew. Mm. I've been a choir boy as a, you know, as a kid, mm. uh, and, you know, I, I, I really knew when the atheism ran out mm. what I needed to do, but I've been, mm. I've been so noisy, I've been so mouthy, as an atheist that I thought, oh, I'll be humiliated. So I kept it all to myself. And of course, when Fiona said, I'm going to that church, I, I knew I had to go. Hmm. And that was the start of a process for you. And I, I know uh, you ended up uh, being invited by Cliff to uh, a big uh, evangelistic event held by Lewis Palau and yes. both went forward. Uh, is that right? Or were you up in the stands? No, we, we didn't. Actually, Fiona was going to go forward. Mm -hmm. And I stopped her and I said, where are you going? Because, okay. you know, I was scared, really. Mm -hmm. I was scared for my reputation. Yeah. <laughs> I said, yeah. where are you going? She said, I'm going to do what he just said, which was come down onto this lovely green turf and speak with one of our councillors, stewards, friends, whatever they are. And uh, yeah. I, I said, great. And I said, I said, where am I sleeping tonight? Now, uh -huh. you know, because we were living in sin, Dave. That, that's, I, I know you're not supposed to say that. It's not fashionable. But, hey, it's the truth. We were living uh -huh. in sin. And uh, so I, I said, where am I sleeping tonight? And Fiona said, don't even need to worry about it. What we need to do is get hold of this while it's here, right now, in front of us. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we didn't go forward, actually. But we did uh, pray the prayer and made yeah. a commitment to Jesus that night. And Cliff, yeah. bless him, bought dinner for us. Oh, that's lovely. And, and what was what just absolutely amazing, Dave, is that Paul <laughs> turned to me um, and said, well, if this is what we're going to do, will you marry me? Uh. Oh, great. I wow. Well, well that's the first thing I knew. I mean, I, I, that's why I said, where am I sleeping tonight? Because I yeah, thought, yeah. if we're going to give, give our lives to Jesus, we do not go on living the way we're living. So you better marry me. <laughs> I didn't say it like no, that. No, you didn't. I you said, didn't. please, will you marry me? Yes. And she said, I will. So, we left so that, that was the, yeah. the horizontal and the vertical working together. <laughs> that was absolutely wonderful. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. Brilliant. I think we should have a little, um, yeah, you've got your harmonica, haven't you? 
Paul, uh-huh. and you are an outstanding harmonica player. I mean, absolutely brilliant. Uh, president, is that right, of the Harmonica Association? Uh, it's, it used to be called the National Harmonica League. It's now called Harmonica UK, which is altogether more cool, man. And uh, I am its president, yes. And uh, it, it's, ba- it's basically, it is an association of people who play the harmonica and people who love the harmonica. And yeah. uh, it's, getting, it's getting bigger. And it's That's good. wonderful. <laughs> Well, I want to hear one of those ha- famous harmonica bits because you know, uh, I want to talk about, you know, we've got to talk about um, the, the musical past. Um, you know, the one that starts with a series of numbers um, <laughs> working backwards. Oh, oh can, you, can, can you give us a bit of that and then we'll talk a little bit about that musical background? Gosh. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. 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 Onwards, on we rode the six hundred. Five, four, three, two, one. Down the valley on the horses they thundered. Five, four, three, two, one. Harbour was it them who really blundered? Five, four, three, two, one. Uh uh-uh, uh, it was the man, Fred. <laughs> Am I going to do all of this? Yeah. Is that, is that, is that, <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant. Uh, I yeah. think I wanted to hear it. Yeah, very good. Very good. Second yeah, because... Yeah, sorry to interrupt you, Dave, but that was the, that yeah. was the second time uh, Alfred Lord Tennyson was on this program this evening. Because, was it really? Because uh, Onward, Onward, Road to 600 is actually... Um, uh, uh, from a Tennyson poem about the charge of the light brigade. Oh, and, um, there we are. Uh, so We're in tune, act, aren't we? An act of plagiarism, yeah. theft. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway. Yeah, because your background is the blues, isn't it? I mean, you know, you've presented uh, on Radio 2 the, uh, the blues show for years and years and years, 30-odd years, I think, isn't it? Um, you started out in the blues, um, yes. Alexis Corner, great, or the father of um, blues in in this country, who nurtured so many musicians, including you. You used to be part of that that set, didn't you? Yes, uh, very much so. I I, I like uh, Alexis Corner being called the father of British blues because I believe that's correct. Actually, he was only about seven years older than us, but we thought that <laughs> he was an old man, and we were you know, teenagers. But um, yeah. if, if one does call Alexis the, the father of British blues, we have to call Chris Barber, the yeah. jazz and yeah, blues yeah. band leader. We have to call yeah. him the grandfather of British blues. Yeah, yeah. And he was, w- was it? Yeah. Alexis Where was he? Lonnie, Lonnie. Yeah, because it was Lonnie all Lonnie changing. Lonnie. Wasn't it? it was coming out of... Yeah, it was coming out of Skiffle and Lonnie Donegan, as you say, and there were these influences, Muddy Waters uh, That's right. and all well, these. Lonnie Donegan's, uh, Lonnie Donegan's Skiffle group was actually a contingent of the Chris Barber band. And Chris Barber, the famous trombonist, actually mm. played the double bass on Lonnie Donegan's big hit, Rock Island Line. And uh, right. so, so that was the, the, the situation. Then when, when Lonnie went solo, as it were, um, he was replaced by Alexis Corner, and Alexis Corner played Skiffle, uh, which he later tried to downplay, but he, he, he couldn't really. He, he had done it. And so, uh, yeah, but he, he was da- indeed the daddy of British blues, and um, yeah. he had an absolutely wonderful band, mostly out-of-work jazz musicians, uh, who played uh, regularly in and around London. And um, the, the front of the the stage or the bandstand 
was always thronged by a bunch of people like uh, me, Brian yeah. Jones. Uh, From the Stones. Yeah, yeah Mick, yeah. Mick Jagger. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and, and various people like that, all hoping to make a living in music. And Alexis would very generously and encouragingly summon one of us onto the platform and we'd get up and sort of sing some blues standard like I'm going to Kansas City or something uh, with the Alexis Corner and enjoy that sort of moment of dream you know my dream is coming yeah. true <laughs> and uh so and m most of us actually did get a, li a life in music because of alexis oh, yeah great. how incredible was georgie fame involved in that in that world no um, georgie georgie was uh part of a slightly different um, a more jazzy world um, okay they, they, <laughs> there was not really between the two clubs but between the fans of the two clubs, there was rivalry. The two clubs yeah. being the Marquee, which is where Alexis Corner and the Manfreds and people like that played, and the and um, the Flamingo, which was yeah. where Georgie Fame and jazz musicians like oh um, Ronnie Scott and. Uh, Phil Seaman and Tubby Hayes and all those people, they used to play there. And of course, then Ronnie Scott started up his own club. But uh, between the marquee, which was slightly more towards sort of skiffle and uh, that sort of side thing, and yeah. the flamingo, which was really more towards uh, incipient soul and scar and blue beat, there was there was rivalry but you know hey who cares yeah. <laughs> um so yeah, georgie, right. no georgie wasn't really part of the alexis corner okay. thing at all he had his own thing going but he's played with you a lot over the years isn't he uh in different georgie uh, yeah uh, only Bits only really in recent years like the last three yeah, years yeah in recent so. years yeah um yeah he um yeah he, he, we've always had the manfreds have always gone on tour with mm. um, guests, uh, in, yeah. it, it's actually not every autumn; it's every other autumn. And um, we we had sort of people like Alan Price and Chris Farlow and Long John mm -hmm. Baldry and Colin Blunston from the Zombies and uh, yeah. oh, P. P. Arnold and uh, just people like that. You know, or, 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 or you even had yes. Paul Young once, and. Really? Uh, yeah. We we I always wanted Georgie, and yeah. uh, he he kept sort of fobbing us off, and then one day he said, "Oh, all right then," yeah. and it was it was honestly not to put any of those other people down, but it was the best. It was and, wonderful, and, yeah. and uh, oh, so he he's, he's done some more work with us since, and yeah. we're hoping for again. <laughs> Great, right. Because, you know, what came out of that, that marquee, you sort of took up uh, singing and, and joined a band called Manfred Mann that um, had a number of uh, hits uh, in, the, uh, in the charts, which, in fact, that 54321 was, was the theme tune of Ready, Steady, Go, wasn't it? And that was the more edgy top of the pops, uh, if I recall. Um, but then after those hits, you, you went solo. Yes. Uh, and I remember it well. Um, my sister used to play your records all the time. Uh, I've been a bad, bad boy. That was that was one of your big hits, I remember. Yes. And then you went into films uh, with that film Privilege. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine, um, uh, Shirley Baxter, who I know is watching, uh, she said, what I really like about Paul Jones is he, he's transitioned into different things. He's not got fixed in one particular band or style. You've kind of moved uh, through different things and it seem to be doing things that you enjoy. Uh, I mean, being on the West End stage for a start, uh, you've kept yourself fresh, which is incredible over the, the long career that you've had. I... Um, I, I... I'd like people to sort of have the impression that I did all that because I was sort of inventing, reinventing myself and, uh, you know, being really sort of clever and resourceful. The truth of the matter is, 
I answered the phone. It yeah. was as simple as that. Uh, yeah. Somebody, you know, I was just leaving the Manfreds thinking I would carry on doing music, but without them. And the phone rang and uh, it was, would I like to be in a film directed by Peter Watkins? Peter Watkins mm -hmm. had done two things as far as I knew at the time. Uh, I think both of them for the BBC. He had done a wonderful drama about the Battle of Culloden and he had done another one about the possibility of nuclear war uh, affecting Great Britain. And the, the BBC showed the Culloden one and refused to show the other one because it was too scary. So <laughs> when when it was, will you do a film with Peter Watkins? Uh, I mean, yep, I'm your man. So. I, I had no thought of ever being an actor, but you know, from that, I got into other stuff and got into theatre and and made other movies. But um, and, yeah, and then another time, somebody rang up and said, "Would you like to um, have a radio program playing the blues?" And I said, "Well, what, what else?" <laughs> so I yeah. said, "Yes." And, but, you know, I didn't really reinvent myself at any time. It was always just answering the phone. Just going in the flow. And Fiona, I, I know for you, there was a time where you put down your, your, your acting career and moved into presenting the gospel along with Paul. It's amazing that, you know, you've played on big stages, but you're very happy to visit uh, local churches, drafty halls at times. Yes. Uh, to share something which is very real and something very meaningful to you. Absolutely. I, I remember being in a, a play for Alan Aitborn, and it was the last big play that I did. I didn't know it was going to be the last one. And we were up and running. The, the, all the critics had been very kind to us. We were going for it. One morning I was having a lovely time of just some prayer and worship with the Lord. And I said to my father in heaven, <laughs> I said, hmm. more than this. And hmm. he spoke to my heart and he said, I've got something for you, but you're not ready yet. And I said, father, what is it? What is it? And of course, I didn't hear any more. <laughs> Finished that play. And about two weeks later, I'm at home and I'm in the kitchen and I said, Father, you know, I, I do need to know what it's going to be. What, what else have you got? Because I, this, it became not satisfying doing that. You know, mm. I just knew there was something else. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, I want you to receive your future by faith. And I said, OK, you've got something for me. OK, I just receive whatever that is. I had not a clue it was going to be telling people about the loveliness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and then within a few days, people started phoning and emailing and saying, just wondered, would you come and give your testimony? And it started off just giving testimony. And I said to Paul, you know, we should do this together. And then that just happened, didn't it? More and more and more and more. And over the years, it grew and it just developed. And it's just mm. the most wonderful thing to be able to share what's happened to you and also share what's in the word of God to encourage mm. and bring hope. Yeah. Yeah. And then to see the response from people. I'd like you yeah. to sing a song together, actually, that, that, that really, I, I guess, expresses um, uh, where you both are well, with, with, with your faith. Um, do you want to choose one that, uh, that does well, that job? We, we, we'll do one that we did um, last Sunday with you in attendance have we did we say everybody who was on that bill because i it is it is extraordinary isn't it and it started with basil mead and then lou felling yeah. then it was you dave then it was yeah. Mayua, and yeah. he introduced sounds of new wine and That's they right. did that wonderful god of the impossible mm, that was mal, <laughs> pope. mal pope came on who else was and there? philippa hannah yeah, she was Philippa, and then she it was, was great. the wonderful Bryn Howarth, of course. Yeah, and then of course Noel Robinson. Yeah. Uh, we also talked to, um, we interviewed. A oh yeah, James, James Brazier from from, from uh, Samaritan's Purse, yes. who came up and, mm. and talked about Samaritan's Purse a bit. Mm. But this is a this is a, a song that 
oh, this is the way we, we, we endeavor to live, is just staying as close to the Lord as we can. We're living in a crazy, mad world, aren't we? And we just need yeah. to stay as close to him as we can in his yeah. love. Woke up this morning with my mind resting on Jesus. Woke up this morning with my mind resting on Jesus. Woke up this morning with my mind. Resting on Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's no better way to live than with your mind. Resting on Jesus, no, there's no better way to live than with your mind. Resting on Jesus, no better way to live than with your mind. Resting on Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> You can't hate your neighbor with your mind Resting on Jesus You can't hate your neighbor with your mind Resting on Jesus You can't hate your neighbor with your mind Resting on Jesus Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's perfect peace when your mind is resting on Jesus. Yes, there's perfect peace when your mind is resting on Jesus. The Bible says it. Perfect peace when your mind is Resting on Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Wonderful. A song written with sincerity and sung with sincerity and what a great truth it expouses on resting on Jesus and um, that's where our life does come into sync with how it should be trusting and living and expressing his life from within giving kindness and giving love to others and uh, Paul and Fiona it's been a real joy this afternoon to just chat with you follow the the flow of our conversation share stories about music, share stories about faith and lift people up, I guess, to seeing that higher position that we can be in, resting in Jesus, knowing our strength is fully in him. And if there's anyone who's watching who's never encountered Christ before, and let me really encourage you to draw close to him, um, be open to hearing his voice in the practical things of life, but in the written word, and begin to put your trust in a Christ who is real and interacts with our lives. Thank you, Paul and Fiona, so much for this afternoon. We're going to begin to close now. Um, I've just got a couple of announcements I want to make. Uh, I know Paul has got a, a new album out, a blues album, a double album, which is a compilation of uh, many things that he's done over the years um, and I think it's well worth checking out what is it called Paul it's called the blues Paul Jones the, the blues simple <laughs> straightforward you won't forget that the, the there's, blues there's only, there's only one actual Christian song on it but it's all cool 
wholesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I want to tell you, um, uh, you do check that out. Uh, yes, hold it closer, closer to the camera. Ask Sorry? The Can you hold it up? Closer to the camera. Oh, Can yeah, we see yeah, it there, really closer to the camera? Oh, uh, yeah. Can you get it online, Paul? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 uh, it, it can be streamed and things like that, or you can buy the yeah. CD, or you, if you're really wealthy, you can buy the LP. <laughs> we'll put the blues into your um, your computer, uh, Google it, and you you'll find it there. Uh, and I also want to tell you about an event that I'm doing at the end of November, where I thought it would be great to have a pre-Christmas gathering live in the chapel in the east end of london fiona uh wow. at st catherine's church um i played there uh, about three years ago and we had a whale of a time and it's going to be a special evening um of worship and songs and music and stories uh in uh limehouse in london now the great thing is there is also hotel accommodation available um, in this complex which is all part of the same lovely. complex and it really is lovely Jan has stayed there and can attest to uh, how good it is so if you're from other parts of the country you can actually join us on that Friday night uh, in November um, Pat will put the details up at, at the end I think it would be really great to finish with um, seeing that film again um, appreciating there were some people who weren't on it because uh, 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 for various reasons, uh, one of them, the camera running out uh, of battery, but uh, other reasons, Basil Mead, Philippa Hanna, Moyoa, New Wine Choir. Um, th they weren't able to be on this little show reel, but you get a, a, a flavour and uh, we're going to finish with it. And also you'll see at the end, uh, there is the, what is it called, Pat? The QR. QR, uh, where you hold your phone up and you can get the details of how to, if you want to, uh, give into this initiative please give also the link as well where there will be a link where you can give in to a very very needy situation across the world we believe in love and the power of love and the power of love being outworked and the love of Christ was revealed to us through his life through his compassion and we can share that with others in a meaningful way by giving in to uh, that cause so thanks pat for for running things thanks jan down in somerset thanks again paul yeah, and fiona lovely to be with you we enjoyed it very much and see you all again next month god bless you